You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a professional motivational speaker, Nancy can assist you to blow through your setbacks and start living full out. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Once again, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to the Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Soleri and today we're going to be talking about possibilities of what you can become and truly whether you're 10 or you're 50 plus, you can always start a new career, you can meet new relationships, you can learn new activities, like it's never too late to turn that new page. However, sometimes you got to clean house, let go of some relationships, sometimes you got to learn new skills. And we want to concentrate on letting go of those bad habits, too, that may be holding you back. So we're going to be talking about that throughout the show. Also, in our next segment, you want to stay tuned. Our inspirational guest today, Nikki Johnson Alfano, truly an amazing woman. I mean, she's had more heartbreaks than I can count on two hands. But at the same time, you'll never meet someone with a bigger smile and uh, she has wiped away those tears. She's like, you know what? My life is worth more. And I love her vigor. I love her tenacity. And you will too. So stay tuned for that. Also, we want to make sure that along today's show and beyond that you are supported. Always feel free to reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. And you can do that if you have questions or need resources Or if you know someone who has an inspirational story, or perhaps that's you, reach out to us there and let us know your name, contact info, what you've gone through, how you got through it. And just like Nikki Johnson Alfano, you could be on as an inspirational guest. We would love to hear from you. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a listener on the line. We're going to go check in and see what's up with them. Hello. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, Nancy. Hi there. Hey, how Uh, can I help you? So I am currently going through a career switch and finding a job can be stressful. Um, It has brought my self-esteem and feeling of stability very low. Uh, How would you cope with something like this? Mm. You know, honestly, first of all, number one, I want to give you a big hug right now, you know, even though I'm not right beside you because it can be... um, kind of disheartening, right? Um, What is the part that makes you feel the most insecure? Is it sending off resumes and cover letters and never hearing back? Or is it maybe feedback you've given or maybe feeling like you're not enough? So it's the part where I have been applying for, for a couple months now, or I'd say like three months. And like nothing out of what I'm looking for is coming my way. Like the, the offers that I'm getting are not fitting what I'm looking for. And so I have to keep applying and applying. And you're right. Sometimes the applications are not positive. Sometimes they come as unfortunate letters. But I have to keep going. And um, in the midst of it all, I don't have, like, paychecks coming in. So that's one component. Um, so that's, a, that's another factor that's been affecting my self-esteem. And and what is it that you do? What is or what would you like to do? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm doing. Um, my goal is to become a business analyst. I I did study business um, in college, and right out of college, I worked for a bank for two years. Um, after that, um, I decided I didn't want to do banking. So I'm looking for an analyst position where I can learn new skills. Mm-hmm. And so that's the part where I, I find it difficult. Companies are sometimes not willing to do the training. They're looking for someone more experienced mm-hmm. in in certain uh, like systems um, or certain skill sets that I still have to learn myself as I go. So, <clears throat> in what I'm hearing you say, there's there's really three things co- that come up for me. Two of them are are suggestions for work. And one of them is just a suggestion for growth. And the two that I want you to think about for work is I know that the temptation is to go looking online for ads and applying. But that's kind of like applying with the masses, right? And Mm -hmm. I always believe in going a different way. Now, it might feel a little bit like off-roading, right? But, you know, it's, it's better if you can carve your own path in life. And a couple Mm -hmm. tools I want to send your way 
is mm -hmm. if you have LinkedIn, which if you don't, you should, but if you do, LinkedIn has a very great tool called Sales Navigator where you have the ability to look up companies, look up contacts at those companies, get their emails. Uh, there's another really good site called Hunter, and Hunter's even free. And again, same philosophy. You can search company names, look up contacts, get their emails. And what I want you to explore is I want you to choose where you want to work. I want you to choose the industry. I want you to choose the city. And I want you to perhaps go to those tools and find companies and find HR people or, you know, C-level staff. And I want you to take that beautiful resume and customize that cover letter. And I want you to throw out your information to them. And the reason why I say that is because there's a lot of chitter chatter that oftentimes happens. Oh, we need this, or this person's not performing. Let's keep an eye on them. Oh, the drag of rehiring, the retraining. You know, there could be any one of those companies that you reach out to that might be pondering hiring someone or letting someone go. And then all of a sudden, the clouds part, they get your resume, they get your cover letter, boom. Okay, just a thought. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want you to consider is job boards that are online, like Upwork, um, or there's other ones, Guru, you know, there's many of them. And you can go on there and you can create a profile and you can take certain skills tests and you can, you know, you can search for jobs that way. And also people can invite you to apply for a job. Now, it doesn't mean that the minute you create your profile, you know, 20 jobs are going to come your way, but it's another outlet. It's another opportunity. Then the other thing that you want to consider, so those are the two ways that you can get out there and maybe be looking for jobs outside of what you're currently doing. And the other suggestions I want to give you are, number one, you know, make sure that your LinkedIn profile is the best it can be. It is still the go-to, making sure that all your social media are as clean and professional as they can be. Um, making sure that if you can, that you mingle with others that are in the field that you want to go into, or at least mingle with others that work at companies you'd like to work for. And that could be, you know, boldly calling someone up that, you know, has a job like you want and maybe asking if you could take them out for coffee or have a quick call with them or job shadow them. That's just going to go and open up doors. You know, they might tell you things, I wish I had done this, or I wish I hadn't done that, or along the way, I found this resource and it helped me get this job. You should try it in your area. And so if you can do that, I think that will help a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And then the biggest thing, the biggest, biggest, biggest thing is you have to be able to look in the mirror and know that you are ready, know that you are enough. And that mm -hmm. starts with everything from the moment they receive your resume and your cover letter. So making sure the cover letter is customized. The resume is one page, really spaced and formatted and clean. But also, when you first talk to somebody on the phone and they schedule that interview, you want to rise your energy level. It, it, sometimes when we talk to people, we can be talking to them normal. And through the phone, it's a lot less. You almost have to go to the 10th power when you're on the phone with someone, even though you may not feel like you want to do that, or you, it may feel animated, or it may feel cheesy. You got to go bigger, bigger than normal on the phone. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to feel your passion for wanting to work there. They're going to feel your passion for, for what you do and what you want to be. And so the phone is really important, that tonality, that sound level, that enthusiasm, that you've done your research on the company. Let that gigantic wave just wash over that person like, oh, my gosh, where have you been our whole life, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's the actual interview. And it, it's it's playing the part. It's, it's getting in that seat. It's telling them your experience. But personally, I believe in switching the script, meaning that at some point they're going to say, you know, what, you, you know, do you have any questions about the job? And you want to say yes. You want to say yes. I want to know 
What is it about this role that you are looking for? And let them rattle off to you what they're looking for. And then you be that solution in your thank you note, in your thank you email. If you do that, I think you got some yeses coming. Can you try that? Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for your advice. This was extremely helpful. I was taking notes as you were explaining everything. So I do appreciate that, Nancy. Um, I will go back at um, the interviews and every all the different suggestions that you had offered um, with the well, I I I believe in you very, very much, and, and everybody here at Living Full Out does. So go there, go apply, get those tools today, and I know you can do this. You got this, okay? Great. Thank and you for, so much. You're welcome. And for everybody listening, we're going to be coming right back with Nikki Johnson Alfano. Honestly, such an inspirational story. Put on your seatbelt, get ready. It's time to live full out. Life looks a little different. During these times, we're doing our best to keep our minds and bodies strong. And getting a flu shot helps us stay healthy, so we don't miss out on what matters. Like having game night at home. (coughs) Yeah, can't do that while sick with the flu. Now imagine family movie night that your daughter can't live without. Well, that's ruined. And don't forget your uncle's socially distanced cookout. (coughs) See, that's why it's important to be at our strongest. Every year, millions of people in the U.S. get the flu. Especially now, no one has time to miss out on moments that matter. So get your flu shot. Find out more at getmyflushot.org. Brought to you by the AMA, CDC, and the Ad Council. Don't you wish your life came with a warning app? Stop. That dog does not want to be petted. (laughs) Just a little heads up before something bad happens. Move your coffee cup away from your computer. Oh, no, 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 no. So you can have more control. Stop. You're texting your boss by mistake. Uh Uh-oh. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes like managing your weight, getting active, stopping smoking, and eating healthier, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. It's easy to learn your risk. Take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Warning, the cap is loose on that (laughs) catch-up. Ugh. Don't wait. You have the power to change the outcome. Visit doihaveprediabetes.org today. That's doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Watch out! (laughs) You got me! The galaxy is safe once again. In the pretend universe, kids play with pretend guns. In the real world, it's up to us to make sure they don't get their hands on a real gun. If you have a gun in the house, keep it locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Safe gun storage saves lives. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. That's nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A Teenager. Learning the Lingo. Today, I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. 
A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about the possibilities of what you can become. And I just love that because when you have a possibility, you know that if you just take a little little teeny step, you know, here and there, you can get to where you want to go. You can make strides. It may not be the epic dream, but you might have an unexpected surprise, something you didn't even know you were striving for. That's the great thing about life. But we have to feel it through, right? We have to live it. We have to sometimes experience heartbreaks. And our inspirational guest today, Nikki Johnson Alfano, has had more than one heartbreak in her life. And I don't want to give it all away, but I really want you to, you know, cheer for her as you're listening to her story. I do. I haven't experienced everything she has. But one thing I know about all of us is just hearing one tip one thing that she did, one mindset change could really open doors for you. So I'd like to welcome Nikki to the show. Hi, Nancy. So good to be with you again. Well, I feel the same way, honestly. And there's just so much to your story. I have to jump in because, you know, one of the things that, again, I just said I have never experienced all that you have. And one of those is in your family dynamic growing up, I know your dad left when you were two and your mom had you in a really unstable environment for years, uh, homeless, living in shelters. Thankfully, you know, the pillar of your family, your grandmother was there when you could live with her, but even that was kind of a back and forth between her and your mom. And just honestly, along the way, you had every reason to just throw your hands in the air and give up, but you didn't. And one of the things that your mom did do probably one of the best things she did, is take you to the library when you were a kid. And that allowed you to really start dreaming. What did you want to be when you were kind of in the library and looking around and learning? What did you What did you dream about? Um, I think for me, what I loved about going to the library, and this was during a time that my family was experiencing homelessness and during the day, we couldn't be in the shelter was that it opened up an entire world to me beyond what I could see around me. And I read about art and travel and literature and culture. And so it made me expand my mind. But I'm fortunate to say that what I wanted to be when I was a kid, which was a lawyer, is exactly what I'm doing, is exactly what I'm doing now. And I would say that one of the reasons I wanted to be a lawyer was I didn't fully understand what that meant, but I knew that I felt really powerless and that I didn't have a voice. And to me, being a lawyer meant that I would have the language to be able to talk about the things that were important to me, but also to really advocate for other people who were maybe not in the place that they would want to be. Well, you were uh, a wiser kiddo than most, <laughs> you know, but but I think a lot of times when we go through such changes, such heartbreak early on, it does grow you up really quickly. And I know that beyond high school, you know, you, you attempted once at college and you unfortunately kind of failed out of it. But one of the things about life, which is really a gift, is when people come into our lives and they take a stand for us, like they want us to succeed. And you were lucky to get a job as a nanny for two attorneys. What's the odds? And what did they do? How did they kind of set you up to succeed? Thank you so much. This is such an important part of my story. And very much I talk about the importance of having people in your life who will advocate for you, but also being in a place to accept that help. 
So I had gone off to college. I had a scholarship. I had a lot of trouble, which a lot of first generation kids do. And you know, really struggled and was academically dismissed. I was fortunately to get a job because I needed to be able to take care of myself as a live-in nanny out in the suburbs for a family of lawyers. And one of the things that they really did for me was, one, they really encouraged me to go back to school and said to me that they believed that I had the skills and the talent to be able to be a successful lawyer. And that meant so much for people who were doing what it was that I wanted to do. But besides just encouraging me to go back to school, they also made sure that one of them was at home every night by six o'clock so I could go back to college at night. And I did end up going back to college at night and ended up graduating and going on to law school. So, you know, a lot of times it is the importance of sometimes having people who can see something in you, even when you can't see it in yourself at that moment. And then, you know, advocating and putting in the time and the effort to help you facilitate that dream. And so, you know, sometimes you're the person who needs that help. And sometimes you're the person that can give that help to other people. And so both of those things are important. And both of those things so many times need to happen in people's lives. And they can be life changing. Well, and I'm so glad that they came in at that time when you needed them most. And, you know, somebody came unexpected into your life, which was your dad, also at the end of college there. And I know for years, having not having him in your life, you thought, gosh, if he only knew me, if he had only known me. But when you met him, he was good for half a second. And then when you pressed him on the hard questions of where you been my whole life, right? I would do the same thing. He crumbled. But that that really defeated you in what way? I think because I had a fantasy of what that would be. And it felt like a very real rejection of me as a person because I guess I'd already always held on to the fantasy that, like you said, if he knew me, he would love me and that, you know, him leaving so early in my life wasn't personal. And then it made it feel very personal. And, you know, now that I've gotten older, I think that I have a sense of forgiveness and that people need to be extended grace. And I think that when I look at it, that there was probably a lot of shame on his part and he felt guilty and he didn't like feeling those things. And a lot of human beings, it's a normal kind of human reaction is if something doesn't feel good, we stay away from it. And unfortunately, that can have consequences for the other people involved. So, you know, that was really hurtful. But, you know, at the end of the day, he really was a stranger and not somebody that I knew. And so it made me sad. But as I've gotten older, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing I can do to change it. You know, he right. since um, passed away. He passed away in 2020 well, um, I, from lung I, cancer. Yeah, and I, and, I, and you know, again, like you said, you, you didn't know him. But I got to tell you what, Nikki, you are one of the nicest, empathetic attorneys I've ever met. <laughs> and so I Thank want you. everybody to stay with us because there's more to her story. And today we are think, you know, talking about the possibilities of what you can become. So even if you, know, you have hard times in your life, you can rise above it. You can achieve dreams just like she became an attorney. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics... I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. 
The only thing I didn't learn in school today. The only thing I didn't learn today. The only thing I didn't learn is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. I'm Nancy Soleri, Certified Life and Business Coach. I want to invite you to the Personal Development Boot Camp. During the boot camp, we're going to be looking at taking those insecurities that you have and getting rid of them. We're also going to look at ways in which you can thrive and live a life full of purpose. Go to livingfullout.com forward slash boot camp, livingfullout.com forward slash boot camp to sign up. I believe in you and here's to you living your life full out. They'll challenge your authority. They'll try to break your will. They'll push you to the edge of your sanity. Because that's what kids do. But this car is your territory, not theirs. Defend it. Who makes the payments? Who cleans it? Who drives it? You do. That's who. And in here, your word is law. So when you say you won't move until everyone's buckled up, you won't budge an inch. Until you hear that click. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash kids buckle up. Seven million children suffer from asthma, more than any other chronic disease. Most asthma attacks are caused by allergic reactions to allergens, including those left behind by cockroaches and mice. In fact, 82% of U.S. households contain mouse allergens, and cockroaches are found in up to 98% of urban homes. How can you protect your family? Find out at PestWorld.org. A message from the National Pest Management Association and the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. It, slip it, cuff it, check it. Talk to doctor now and share it. I get it, slip it, cuff it, check it twice a day. I get it, slip it, cuff it, check it in the morning and before dinner. I get it, slip it, cuff it, check it, and share it with my doctor. Nearly one in two U.S. adults have high blood pressure. That's why it's important to self-monitor your blood pressure in four easy-to-remember steps. It starts with a monitor. Now that I know my blood pressure numbers, I talked with my doctor. We're getting those numbers down. Get it, slip it, cuff it, check it. Talk to doctor now and share it. Be next to talk to your doctor about your blood pressure numbers. Get down with your blood pressure. Self-monitoring is power. Learn more at manageyourbp.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the American Heart Association, and the American Medical Association. In partnership with the Office of Minority Health and Health Resources and Services Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you so much for joining us today. So happy to have you here. And we are talking about the possibilities of what you can become. And our inspirational guest today, Nikki Johnson Alfano, is a great example of what it means to live full out and just how honest she's being with every part of her story. I hope that you just get one little tip from it, one you know, pearl of wisdom, and I'm sure you will. So stay with us here. And Nikki, I want to welcome you back to the show. Thank you so much. I'm enjoying this conversation so much. Good. Well, you know, the next thing I want to ask you about is just one that comes later in life for so many of us, and it happened for you. You know, you had gotten married, um, but you and your husband kind of had different views of the way life was going to go, you know, and one of you wanted to have kids, one of you decided not so much anymore. And there were, there were other factors too, but letting that relationship go, I imagine was really hard. But at the same time, if you hadn't let go of that, you wouldn't have met your current cutie, your current husband, which congratulations, recently married. Um, Thank you. But the tricky part about that one 
is that he is 19 years older than you, you know, and sometimes we can't plan love when it's going to happen. And we can't plan the age of the person we fall in love with. Is that scary to know that you have such a large gap in age? Or are you just embracing the moment? Um, I think two things can be true at the same time. So I'm so lucky my husband, Gayton, we're a week away from selling our, or celebrating our one-year anniversary. Um, you know, he's vibrant and healthy and handsome and strong and brilliant, and I'm just the luckiest woman. Absolutely, you know, I would be lying to say that I didn't look at the age gap, but I'm almost 50 years old myself, so I, I think when you get to a certain stage in life, there's not as much of a difference as if we were, you know, if I was 20 and he was 39. But I think I had to say to myself, I really love this man. I feel really lucky to have the second chance at love. And I would rather have however much time I have with him than to have a lifetime with someone else. And yeah, I, gosh, I love that. I just love that because I think a lot of times when people go, on dating sites and so forth, they can be overly picky. Mm, you're out of my five-year range, you know, or, you know, need more hair on the head, right? Or whatever that might look like. And so, again, I love that your heart is so big and that you've, you've decided you'd rather choose that love, that feeling over what people might think. And, you know, the, the thing is today we're talking about the possibilities of what you can become. And one thing that you always wanted, and this is just for you, was you wanted to be in a pageant. And, (laughs) well, some might think, okay, literally, she's an attorney. Like, why does she need to become Miss America, too? But everybody's got these dreams. These, I mean, I'm a total karaoke nerd. I love to karaoke. Like, I love doing things. And you wanted to get into pageantry, but you actually went really far. What did you happen? What happened most recently? So um, to understand my love of pageantry, when I was like 10 years old at a homeless shelter, I'm looking at on the television in the homeless shelter, um, the Miss America pageant. And I was seeing these beautiful, gorgeous women, and it seemed like an impossibility to me. And it wasn't just that they were gorgeous, but they were going to college and they wanted to be doctors and lawyers. And it seemed an impossibility. Fast forward decades you know, I'm a successful lawyer. I actually get asked to judge the Miss Philadelphia pageant. I do. And I'm sitting there and thinking to myself, gosh, I wish I'd gotten the chance when I was younger. And a couple of years later, someone said, hey, there's a, did you know that there's a pageant for married women? And the woman that I met was competing for Mrs. Pennsylvania. And she ended up winning, and we ended up becoming good friends. And so the following year, I decided to compete in my first pageant. I was um, yeah, I was second runner-up, like top three, which is amazing for my first pageant. Um, and then right after that, within six months, I go through this terrible divorce after being married for like 14 years. But my pageant sisters really – rallied around me and I decided to compete again at the Ms. level, which doesn't require you to be married. And I actually won and was crowned Miss Pennsylvania, Miss Congeniality. It, it was fantastic. And during the pandemic, because so much was closed down, um, I ended up entering the Ms. Um, MS, so not the one that you see on television, we're a little bit older, um, but the Ms. Universe pageant. And so because of the pandemic, it was a mix of girls from the States, from other countries throughout the world, but it wasn't necessarily a full contingent. And I went to Las Vegas and my platform was homelessness because of my family's experience and I won. And so I think what I want people to take from my story is that you are never too old. Um, you know, it doesn't look, it didn't look exactly how I thought it would, but it was even, it was even better. Um, you know, it wasn't always in my time. It was in God's time. And having the life that you want, loving what you do, loving who you're with, loving who you are is a choice. 
it's not always an easy choice. And sometimes you're not going to have everything at the same time, but you have to be able to figure out the things that you can live with and the things that you can live without and the things that are most important to you. Not what's important to other people, but what's important to you. And really take concrete steps to make sure that your activities and things match up with your values and just live out loud. That's what I love about what you're doing. I mean, we all have challenges out there, and I don't want to make light of people's challenges, but you get this life. What are you going to do with it? Mm, I love that. So, you know, that 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 phrase, so you, you're saying I have a chance, <laughs> is coming up in my mind. All right, Nancy, there's still a chance, right? But, but what I really appreciate that you have walked us through, you know, so many points of your story in that, you know, you really designed your life the way it's going to be. And it has come with heartbreaks and it's come with wins. But at the end of the day, I guess the, the, the thing that stands out to me about you is, you know, you should have been wrapped up and taken care of. And you were by different people along your path, right? Your grandmother, those attorneys that hired you as a nanny, you know, your, your husband of today. But at the same time, you've really had to step up and be the mother to so many kind of the pillar of the family, the the hierarchy of the friends. That's a lot of pressure. And I think for those who feel that pressure, what would you say to them? So one of the challenges for me was I, I think I felt that, and I think especially a lot of women feel that, um, kind of that curse of perfection. And, you know, I went into therapy, which was super helpful. Um, and I was, easily, I was willing to easily extend grace to others, but I had to learn to extend grace to myself and understand that for me, I needed to open up and have vulnerability. I think growing up the way that I did, I felt that I had to have some version of perfection and that to be loved, I needed to earn people's love. Like, look at this perfect version of me. Now you'll love me. And I think as I've gotten older, I have realized that I am enough and that not everyone's going to love me and that's okay. But the people that I need and want to be around me and are loving towards me are there. And I'm not going to try to convince someone like those days are over. I'm done trying to convince people that I'm, I'm good enough. You accept me for how, how I am. Um, you know, I try to be a good, thoughtful, productive person in the community, but I'm not everybody's cup of tea. But that doesn't mean that, that I'm not a hot piping cup of tea. It just means I might not be your cup of tea. And, and that's okay. Um, but that takes time, and I think we're all a work in progress. Most days, mm. I know that. I understand it. I'm good at it. Other days, I completely fall apart. I'm a little bit of a mess. And... I'm like, why doesn't that person like me? Why didn't I get that opportunity? And I think you have to allow that to happen. But what I have understood with time is that if it is meant for me, it can't be taken away from me. It can't be given to somebody else. And if it doesn't happen for me, it's because either the timing's not right or it's not the right opportunity for me. And I have to just allow that to be, but I think as you get more experience in life, you've seen things cycle back around and you've seen things that you really wanted that you pushed for that you wish you never had. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I know one of the things that you've leaned on a lot is your faith. And in our last just seconds here of the show, do you have a passage? Do you have uh, something that you've leaned on? Um. You know, I don't know that I would say a specific Bible verse, but, you know, my relationship with God is incredibly important to me. And, you know, sometimes God's walked beside me and sometimes I have been carried in God's arms and mm. I allow that and I allow that to be and that it all works out in the end. And if it isn't working out, then it's not the end. Mm. 
You know, I love that. Now, you know, I'm visually impaired, so um, I will always give you a piggyback ride, but you just have to tell me where to go. Okay, I can't, uh, <laughs> I won't be the guide, but I will always carry you too, Nikki. I think that you are just fantastic. And um, if, you know, I would bow down right now, you know, hail to the queen um, if you were here, but uh, you are just really a dynamo. And, and thank you for just your honesty. And I'm proud of you. And I want you to go out there and just keep living full out. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. And you're just such an amazing inspiration to the rest of us. So I'm just trying to keep up with you, Queen. Oh, <laughs> all right. Great. Well, you know what? I, I, will, I will take that. I will, I will take that all day. I'll like wiggle my toes going, she called me Queen. I really do take that. So, <laughs> well, thank you, Nikki. Just have a great day. We appreciate you so much. And for everyone else, we're going to be coming right back after this break. Stay with us. We'll be back. To some people, the sound of a baby babbling doesn't mean much. But that's not necessarily true. By six months, they're combining vowels and consonants. By nine months, they're trying out different kinds of sounds. And by 12 months, their babbling is beginning to take on some meaning especially if there's no babbling at all. Little to no babbling by 12 months or later is just one of the possible signs of autism in children. Early screening and intervention can make a lifetime of difference and unlock a world of possibilities. Take the first step at AutismSpeaks.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Most of us like to be out in the sun. That's why sunscreen and other safety measures are key to protecting your skin from aging and cancer. The FDA recommends using a sunscreen with a sun protection factor, or SPF, of 15 or higher. Also, look for broad spectrum on the label. That means both harmful ultraviolet A and B rays are blocked. UVA rays age the skin, UVB rays burn, and both cause cancer. But the perfect sunscreen doesn't count if you use it wrong. Don't need sunscreen on a cloudy day? Wrong. 80% of UV rays still get through the haze. Only use sunscreen at the beach? Nope. Anytime you're outside, UV rays attack the skin, so you need protection. And you have to reapply sunscreen every two hours. Remember, SPF plus broad spectrum equal healthy fun in the sun. Visit www.fda.gov sunscreen for more information. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Right now, our country feels divided, but there's a place where people are coming together. I got to tell you, I was nervous to talk to someone so different than me. Me too, but I'm glad we are. Love Has No Labels and One Small Step are helping people with different political views, beliefs, and life experiences come together through conversation, and it feels good. Wow, your story is so... Uh, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> When people actually sit down, talk, and listen to one another, they can break down boundaries and connect as human beings. At lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step, you can listen to amazing, life-changing conversations and find simple tools to start a conversation of your own. I know one thing. This conversation gives me hope. It gives me a lot of hope, too. Take a step toward bringing our country and your community together by having the courage to start a conversation at lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step. A message from StoryCorps, Love Has No Labels, and the Ad Council. All right, crew, let's get her dug. Honey, you want to give me a hand? I'm planting that tree, remember? No matter how large or small your digging project may be, no matter how urban or rural, you must always call 811 before any digging project. 811 is our national one-call number alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. You must call 811 at least two to three business days before any digging project, so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. 
This includes natural gas and petroleum pipelines, electric, communication cables, and water and sewer lines. So before you do this, or this, make sure you do this. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Brought to you by Common Ground Alliance. When it comes to considering the possibilities of what you want to be, I want you to dream big. Really, no limits. Now, granted, maybe you won't be an astronaut, but you know what? You can do something in space exploration. Or if you want to be a writer, you know what? Who knows? Your talents might just be kind of on the surface right now, but they're ready to explode. And before you know it, you're a best-selling author. Dream big. Get out there. Live full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a professional motivational speaker, Nancy can assist you to blow through your setbacks and start living full out. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Once again, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about the possibilities of what you want to be. And I just really, I'm smiling right now as we're talking about this show because it's so easy to get derailed in life. It's so easy to meet that wrong person or even the right person, but all of a sudden the dream you had, you're off-roading, right? You're not, you're not on that same path. Or sometimes you can feel as though resources are just too far away. They're not even a fingertip away. They're two arms length away, a football field away, right? But what I love is that we do have the ability to lean on our communities to help give us resources, to help give us support. Uh, Some obviously do lean on their faith. I do that all the time in terms of needing strength and just some wisdom and focus and peace. And then other times we can lean, lean on education you know, we have the ability to learn. We have the ability to start over. So if something is not working in your right r- life, rather than hitting that brick wall over and over again, boldly take a class. Open your mind. Open your eyes. You never know what that next career could be. And when I think about my life, I remember back when I was 16 and my sisters and I, there's three of us, we all were given the diagnosis of having retinitis pigmentosa. And the doctor looked at me and said, well, you're going to go blind by 40. Start making plans. Hmm. Okay. It's not exactly what a 16-year-old wants to hear. Well, my first plan was to get that license. Now, nobody over my lifetime would tell you I was a good driver, right? Probably fall into that female driver category on top of that, going blind. So that didn't help. But My middle sister and I, we also took on going to Europe. We went to Japan, you know, wanted to see things before I couldn't. But that's all good, right? Traveling and getting your license. But it's that inner stuff. It's it's what makes us feel like we're purposeful. It's what makes us feel like we're making a difference. My my driver's license didn't do that for me. Uh, Seeing the Vatican, it was great, but it didn't it didn't fill my purpose. I had to find that for myself, but sometimes, you know, we have our whole lifetime to find and find and find, and I wanted to do that, but my vision was fading on me, and that was in some ways making some decisions for me. You know, out of the gate at the University of Oregon, I got a degree in broadcasting and psychology. I knew I wanted to be in broadcasting. I knew I wanted to be somewhere in this talk show world, just didn't know what that looked like. But as my vision started to change and disappear, I mean, literally, I couldn't read the teleprompter. It became harder to see at night. Uh, I had to give up driving and on and on and on as I was in different career choices that I'd made, such as real estate. I mean, it's hard to be a realtor when you don't drive, (laughs) but I had to get creative. And the reason why I bring all this up is because today we're talking about the possibility of what you can become and truly I almost get emotional when I think about this because, you know, I didn't realize that everything I ever needed was already in me. You know, here I was in some ways thinking, okay, well, maybe real estate's my thing. Okay, well, maybe, maybe this is my thing, right? But all along, knowing that my eyesight was going to leave me, 
you know, it, it meant that certain career choices might be off the table. But the gift of gab, right, the, the gift of listening, um, being able to talk, it really came full circle. So for me, as I came out of real estate, I was in that for 13 years, and I had to stop driving, and it just became harder to do that and, you know, help clients look at properties and all. I created Living Full Out, this coaching motivational company, and I knew I wanted to help other people connect the dots and figure out what they wanted and how they wanted to get there. That was our whole goal. And along that way, I got my life coaching uh, certification. And when I was there, KFWB in Los Angeles came knocking on my door. They wanted a life coach on the weekend. That would be me. And they had Les Brown during the week. And that got me back into broadcasting. And it wasn't necessarily because I was the best life coach out of my class. I mean, I was good, but I was memorable. And I worked hard. I couldn't read all the books. I had to scan every, we had like six books for life coaching school. I had to scan all of them page by page by page so that my voiceover technology could read those pages to me. I had to get really creative with how I was going to do all my exams. And I think that the person who led that class thought, well, gosh, if Nancy can do all this, then she's your gal. And that got me right back into the hot seat right here behind the mic talking to you. And of course, years later, the Living Full Out show was born and, and all these different other broadcasting opportunities have come my way. But I thank God, I thank RP in some ways, because by taking away the distractions of what about this and what about this, it really allowed me to narrow in and realize that my purpose was there the whole time. And maybe yours is too. You just have to sometimes quiet the noise, you know, look at those super strengths that are natural traits that you already embody. You don't even have to learn them. And guess what? You are right there. You're living full out. So I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And again, reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. If you have an inspirational story or know someone who does, give us their name, give us their contact info, what they went through, how they got through it, most of all, what they learned, and perhaps we can have them on as an inspirational guest. We are so proud of every move that you make towards living full out. And I believe in you every step of the way. See you soon. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Solari. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Here's to you, Living Full Out.